Hi, I'm here with Mr. Shuffleworth, who's a consultant ophthalmologist who specialises in ocular plastics. He's also a senior examiner for the refraction certificate, which is part of the Royal College of Ophthalmologists uh, set of exams. So thanks for letting us interview you today. It's a pleasure. So could you quickly summarise the structure of the exams for us? Well, the exams from the, from the college's uh, perspective, it consists of uh, four essentially exams. One you can take as, a, as an undergraduate at the end of your medical training, which is the Duke Elder uh, um, examination, which is an MCQ, and uh, which I thoroughly recommend. And the part one is basically a, 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 a basic science, and, and the science is behind uh, um, uh, ophthalmology, and it covers uh, a range of topics from the basics of anatomy, embryology, physiology, biochemistry, uh, through to the physiology or through to the pharmacology um, we'll be able to produce ray diagrams and, and uh, the optics behind a basic uh, ophthalmic instrumentation so you've got an understanding of, of the way that uh, instruments actually work optically. Uh, the next would be the refraction certificate. Yeah, the, the idea of the refraction certificate is essentially to test practical skills to, uh, and to ensure that somebody is able to provide a reasonable refraction for somebody, particularly a, a, a child, uh, who, who, who you may meet in your paediatric clinics and who, for whom uh, obviously a refraction may be a, a very critical part of their, of their assessment. The refraction examination is uh, um, a practical assessment of, of, uh, of your refraction skills. Um, it is marked uh, in two ways, one by the examiner who is present in the, uh, uh, in the OSCE station who will comment perhaps upon aspects of technique and some of the, uh, the accuracy of, of uh, prescriptions. But the majority of the, of the uh, prescription marks are awarded by uh, a computer which looks at uh, essentially uh, the blur induced by your, your, the error in your refraction from that of what is, is recognised as the answer refraction. I often describe it as a, as a silent examination in, in the sense that the examiners are present but they don't actually do anything. They are just simply observing. There are no questions to be concocted all of which are well described on the college website. And uh, it's uh, for refraction that's broken up into different sections and it's timed. It is timed, yeah, I mean there are 12 OSCEs, essentially mm -hmm. you, 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 you visit four rooms, which mm -hmm. there are three OSCEs in each, mm -hmm. and you have 10 minutes with, for, to do two OSCEs and then mm -hmm. a further five minutes for a further OSCE, and these are broken down, as I say, into retinoscopies, mm -hmm. and so there are essentially six retinoscopies to perform, there is a, there are refinement of sphere, refinement of of a uh, cylinder, essentially breaking down the components of a full refraction where you'd start with a, a retinoscopy and you'd go on to refine the sphere and then the sill and then go on to a binocular balance uh, mm -hmm. before you issue a final prescription. So it's broken down into, into, into components like that, in, interspersed with fitting a trial frame, fitting lenses properly, measuring an IPD and being able to pr pres um, prescribe some form of uh, a near addition as well. Okay. But it's all pretty well, pretty, it's all well described. Mm -hmm. And then once you pass that, uh, you then go on to your ST3 level and then you have a bit of a break uh, and then the next exam would be your part two. Can you tell us a bit more about that? The, the, well, the part two exam, as I mentioned earlier, is essentially is a, a, a written paper which is, it consists of two MCQ. Uh, the clinical part of the examination um, takes place any time after you've passed your, your written part and that is uh, of your choosing written. And the Viva is on one day, and then the OSCE is a yes. couple of days later. Usually, yeah. And then the Viva is about five stations, uh, and then the yeah. communication station. Um, and I'll list the uh, types of the stations that come up uh, at the bottom. Uh, and then the OSCE, again, is a set um, number of stations uh, based on uh, anatomy, usually, isn't it? So you have a front of the eyelids, Oh, yes, it's a, yeah, 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 yeah. Anti anterior, anterior segment, segment. Uh, eyelids, mm. orbit, strabismus, mm. and retina. Mm. So they are essentially broken out into, into those sort of aspects. And you will see three patients or thereabouts. You usually set a, a short clinical scenario and you're asked to examine a, a system. Mm. You're expected to pick up the obvious clinical signs. And to be fair, I think we have to say that the, the, the clinical signs, we're, we're not out to uh, catch people out here. It's, they, they are they should be straightforward clinical signs to be picked up by uh, you know, an, op an ophthalmologist mm -hmm. at this stage of their training without a great deal of, uh, of difficulty and to essentially uh, synthesise uh, uh, the signs and, and to come up with some putative or working, working diagnosis. You're then likely to be asked some uh, ancillary questions relating to that diagnosis which might include management investigations or, or what you do next, that sort of that sort of scenario. And uh, how can you practice for the OSCE exam? Um, if, if it's what we do every day? 
Yeah, well, you, you can ask your your. I mean, yeah. You can ask your, your uh, uh, supervisors and or consultants in clinics just to show you clinical signs or set a, qu a quick sort of a clinical uh, 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 scenario about a patient, ask you to have a quick look and just answer a few quick questions because that's the sort of thing that really it boils down to. It's a matter of having a, a good breadth of exposure uh, and having a, 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 a method for examining all ocular systems uh, and not to be uh, afraid or shying away from the bits that I think typically people feel uh, m uh, most uncomfortable with, which tends to be strabismus and orbits. Yeah, I remember when I was practicing for the exam, we got together with a few others that were sitting it and uh, had some consultants helping us and just did set yeah, routines and get my own. That's the sort of thing. And as a trainee, once you've completed your exams, can we get involved in any way? Yeah, you can. You can become a train, uh, you know, a, a, a trainee examiner. You are limited mm -hmm. as to exactly what you what you can do. You obviously can't uh, sit the or, or mark the, mm -hmm. the clinical uh, a, a exams, but you can be involved in the, in the first part. Mm -hmm. And I think that's well worth doing. In fact, and the more people we can get involved and in, uh, understand. The it also be quite hard work, I'd say. So once you've finished all the exams and you pass them all, what happens? Well, at that point, you're eligible to be a, a fellow of the Royal College of Ophthalmologists, and the world is your oyster. <laughs> well, I wish it was. <laughs> okay, thanks for letting us interview you today. Pleasure. I hope that's been of some use. <laughs>